I was looking at this footage that I shot in Yoyogi Park in Tokyo, and I was thinking, it doesn't have nearly enough Tori gates, so let's add one. Hey guys, before we continue, I just want to share that I've updated my Patreon tiers. So now people at the $5 level will be getting videos a day early, and people at the $20 level will be getting minis sent out. Um, maybe not every month, I'll try to do what I can. But uh, yeah, I'll be sending these out. The first one will be the uh, miniature version of Superhero Girl. She's three inches tall. You can see her there. And I'll be sculpting each of these myself. So, on with the show. Okay, so here we are in HitFilm Pro. And I've got our footage here. I can scroll through, let's see. Okay, so let's just drag that onto the timeline. And we need to make a composite shot out of it. So we'll click the Make Composite Shot button, or you can right-click and hit Make Composite Shot, or Control-M. So let's click that, and I will call it Yo-Yo-Gi Track. All right, let's uh, open this up, and let's go into our effects and scroll down. And up here we have the foundry and camera tracker. Drag that on. And before we do anything with that, let's take a look at the scene. And we can see we've got these people walking. And they are moving differently from the camera is, from the rest of the footage. The rest of the environment. So we don't want them to mess up the track. So let's min uh, minimize the effects there. And let's make a mask around them. So pick new layer and plane. And it doesn't matter what color it is. Click OK. And I'm going to open that up and the transform and lower the opacity a little bit so that I can see them. And let's pick the square mask top here and just draw around them. Okay, and then open the mask up and transform and we'll click the circle next to path. And so now I'm gonna have to animate that mask so that it moves you know, as they move. So let's click the pen tool and I'll drag this a bit, drag a selection around the mask so we have all four points, and then we can just drag in the middle to position it. And we can see it's added a new keyframe. So then we'll move the timeline for a little bit. Oh, now they're outside the mask again, so we'll drag it again. And then we'll just continue doing this until we get through the whole video. And I'll just go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back when it's done. Okay, I'm all done with that, and you may want to scrub through it a little bit, just to make sure you didn't miss any spots. Like here, it kind of shows a little bit of his arm right there, so I'll just fix that. And you just might want to scrub back and forth to make sure you've got everything. Now, I've already done that, so I know that we're all good. So, okay, let's uh, shrink down our new plane layer, and we don't need that anymore. So we can actually drag that under everything else so that we don't even have to see it. Now let's open our footage, and we've got our effect, we've got our camera tracker on here. We can select the uh, mask that we just made under matte source. We'll pick matte alpha first so that we'll get everything outside of the solid area we created before. And we have under matte layer we'll pick new plane 
and then we're almost ready to track our features. Now, in this particular scene, I know there's a lot of detail with all these trees and gra gravel and such like that. Uh, and the camera moves around quite a bit. So I'm going to add some more tracking points here. Let's spread this out. We can see number of features is 150. I'm going to set it up around like 300. Yeah, there we go. So I can collapse this back down. And so now we can go ahead and hit track features. Now this will take a few minutes, so I'll skip ahead and so you don't have to sit here and watch the progress bar going. Okay, so now that's finished and we can go ahead and click the next button is solve camera. And that will also take a little bit of time, not quite as long as the tracking features, but it'll still take a little bit of time. So I will pause again. Okay, we're done solving the camera. And so now we can click our third button here is to create the scene. And this goes pretty quick. Okay, so now it is all done. Our scene is set up. It is a 3D scene. We can see all our points here that were tracked. As you scrub through, you can see them all. And if you, you can switch this to perspective and rotate and move the scene around. I zoom out, we can see there's our camera. So let's go back to the active camera here. And we can see that our uh, grid, which is the ground plane, is not quite on the ground. And as you rotate it, or as you scroll through, scrub through, you'll see it may not quite match up very nicely. This time it's actually not that bad. Sometimes it's off at a really weird angle. But anyway, let's scrub to a spot near where we're going to place our object. So I'm going to place it near this intersection, pretty much where the people are right now. So I'm going to scrub ahead. And I'm going to find a spot where the camera's not moving around too much. So let's say... And maybe right around here. And then I can just drag out a selection around here and select a whole bunch of those on the ground. And then I'll come down in the lower left corner here and to camera tracker and click the arrow, the little triangle, and go up to ground plane, click that, and come up to set selected. And it'll take a few seconds. And you can see that clearly did not work. So let's pick a different spot. Okay, I tried a few other spots in the video and ended up getting the best results with a spot near the beginning uh, where there was not a whole lot of movement, so not too much motion blur and it looks pretty good now. So let's turn off all these dots so they're not so annoying. We'll come down here. This is under preview features. Just uncheck that. There we go. Okay, so now that our track is finished, uh, let's add our 3D object. So first, let's uh, hide this grid. I'll we'll just click on options here and floor plane, they call it. So it would just be confusing when we see the object along with the grid. So let's come down here to media and import 3D model. Here's my object. And it loads without the textures. So. If your textures are in the same folder, it should load with them, but maybe not. Okay, so let's click that open. Click our diffuse map, little folder. Here's our 
color and specular. I'll choose the gloss map here and normal map. There we go. And of course you can adjust any of these other things that you want, make it more or less shiny, etc. And then we'll just click OK. Alright, now let's minimize our video here. This is the actual video file. And then I'll just drag the 3D object onto the timeline here, right above the video. Make sure it's above the video, because if you drag it underneath, you won't see it, and it'll be very confusing. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Uh, it looks a little bit small, but we can adjust it. So we can see it in 3D if we switch this active camera to one of the other views. Another option is to come down here to, it says view 1, you can switch it to view 2, and then we can see both. I'll just zoom out. And so here is our object, and this red line is the ground plane. So let's move this up because it's not on the actual ground. So I'm going to use the right mouse to drag around, zoom in. Okay, and so instead of just dragging it up, I'm going to change the anchor point. So let's come down here to our object. Let's open up the world transform. And we have the anchor point here. There's three X, Y, Z. Let's move Y. And just make sure, zoom in a bit, make sure it's actually on the ground. There we go. So the reason that we move the anchor point is that if I decide to scale it, now it will scale from the ground up and down instead of from the middle, and then we have to constantly move it around. So let's switch this back to one view. And I can use the arrows here to move it around. And I can't really get to the red arrow very well, so let's switch it to top view. And we're going to have to rotate it anyway, so I might as well spin it around up here. In fact, let's spin it this way, so maybe it'll be easier to grab that arrow. So let's go back to active camera. Uh, still a little bit hard to grab that arrow, but I can grab it. Okay, and I'm going to try and move it forward. Put it around here. Okay, and can't quite grab the thing to rotate it. So let's switch back to two. And I'll switch this to top. So now I can ro rotate it. There we go. And it's a little big, so I'm going to scale it down. I'll use the scale right here. Bring it down. I'd like it to fit inside the path. Okay, something like that. Maybe rotate a little bit. And I, th I think that looks pretty good. Maybe scale it down a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like that. Switch back to one view. And so there it is in our scene. Just drag along here. It's moving pretty good. It is uh, does look like it's sliding a little bit, so I'm, I might want to possibly redo the track. And then on the last frame, it disappears. Uh, you could just make your 
project one frame shorter. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe it doesn't slide. But yeah, it, it looks pretty good. So in the next part, we'll add some lights and a ground plane so it can cast a shadow. Okay, so let's add some lights. So we'll come up here to new layer and add a light. And we can already see we're in shadow here. So let's look at the top view. And here we can see the light is quite far away and on the other side. So let's put it right around here. And I'm going to duplicate it. There we go, duplicate. And I'm going to move this one in the front and maybe down a little bit. So let's look at the back and move that one down around here. So it's kind of the opposite of that one. Okay, let's switch this back to the active camera. And so that works, but it's a little bright. Uh, so let's lower that. We'll open this one up. Uh, open the light and change the intensity. We'll bring it down maybe around like that. Okay, and on the other one that's further away, let's make sure that cast shadows is turned on. And so now we can set a shadow caster. So again, we'll do a new layer. We'll make it a plane make it a white plane. It has to be white for the shadow catcher. And let's name it shadow. Oops. Come on. All right, shadow. Okay, now that we're all white. <laughs> let's switch this to a 3D object. Clicking little icon here. 3D plane. And we'll open it up and change the transform. Let's rotate it on X, say 90 degrees. There we go. And we'll scale it up. There we go. So now we're covering everything and we're seeing the shadow on there. Uh, let's adjust its material make turn off illuminated there we go and we'll place it below the model shadow down below the model okay and so let's uh, still got the shadow selected let's go over to controls and layer properties and we'll change the blending mode to multiply and there we go. Now, that's not really ideal looking compared to the rest of the scene. These shadows are a little harsh. So let's adjust our light, uh, the light behind it with the shadows. Let's change the shadow opacity, bring it down so we can just barely see it. And then the diffusion will soften it up, blur it a little bit. And Maybe let's bring the opacity up a little bit more so we can actually tell it's there. <laughs> and that looks pretty good. Um, I might want to move that other light further away. Let's change our view to 2. And I've got this light. Let's pull it back a little bit. Up. Yeah, something like that. I think that works for the shadow. And there we go. That's it. So let's uh, do a little preview render here. Okay, that seems pretty good. Let's stop. And I'll bring it back. I can hit play. 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. A few other little things uh, with your object. Here's our object. You might want to turn on motion blur by clicking this one. And if it looks too sharp in your scene, you might want to add a, mo a, a blur effect. So open up blurs, just add blur to it. There we go. It's a little too much, but you can reduce it. Change, reduce the radius down to, I don't know, maybe two or Yeah, 1.5 maybe. And I think that looks pretty good. So I won't go over this part, but if you notice when we go way back to the beginning, the people are kind of being cut off by the 3D object uh, where they should be in front of it. So you could draw a little mask uh, around the, uh, the person's body here. Uh, and then you, you would have to animate the mask until that guy is completely clear. Oh, let's uh, switch this back to scale to fit. And so that's it. We're all done and you're ready to export. So if you liked this video, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, share it with your friends, hit that bell icon if you're subscribing, and if you like it, please subscribe on Patreon. Uh, a buck or two really helps out, and maybe you might get something in return. <laughs> okay, see you next time.